Motor Cybertruck confirmed, full self-driving prices reduced. We got a brand new, refreshed Tesla Model 3. Model S and X prices have dropped a ton. What the heck is going on? There's a lot happening with Tesla in the past 24 hours. Let's talk about it. So most of this is official from Tesla, but there is one thing I wanna talk about that is not, it's leaks, and that is about the Tesla Cybertruck. So while Tesla was unveiling the new Model 3 with a ton of refreshed stuff that we'll talk about, some new leaked pictures of the Tesla Cybertruck have been posted to X, and now we confirm there are dual motor Cybertrucks in production. So just as a reminder, Tesla initially said back in 2019 we'd get single, dual, and tri-motor Cybertrucks. Elon then said on X, actually we'll do quad motor, and then it sounded like there was only gonna be quad and dual. Of course, nothing is official yet, a lot has changed, but I think, in my opinion, and from people I've talked to, it sounds like we're gonna be ending up with dual motor and tri-motor Cybertrucks, at least in the short term, of course, long term, anything can change. But as of now, this leak shows that dual motor Cybertrucks are in production by Tesla. Also, this dual motor sticker does not mean specifically there's no tri-motors being made. It's just, now we know dual motor is there, uh, I guess we have known that forever. <laughs> I don't think there was ever a time where we didn't think there was going to be dual motor, but hopefully we'll see tri-motor in addition to the dual motor production. You can see this sticker on the inside of the frunk. It even says dual motor variant, and we have a VIN on there. The VIN is over 600. Now, does that mean over 600 Cybertrucks have been produced? Well, probably. I was trying to do some reading about VINs, and it's not concrete, but it does seem like manufacturers are strictly required to VIN all of their vehicles. It is a sequential number, but I think there are some places where that number can be skipped. So most likely we're over 600 Cybertrucks at this point. If not, we are somewhere around that number, which is super exciting. These pictures bring us a lot of awesome other details as well. Number one, I'm really hoping that this is a powered frunk. And as of now, we have no confirmation that it is or is not. There are some pictures of people holding the frunk open. Of course, maybe it's just disabled or it's not turned on in the software or something. So that doesn't tell us too much. But what we do know is there must be wiring going through the struts because on the frunk, the part that lifts up is where the light bar is. So we we know there is wiring through those struts to at least power the light bar. So there could be wiring down there as well that's pushing these struts open. Along with that, we do have another potential piece of evidence in that there does seem to be, of course it's just speculation, but there seems to be a button in the front to open the frunk. Now, this doesn't mean that the frunk is powered. I'm not sure why they'd put a button there if it wasn't powered, but let's be honest, of course, it could be just to pop the frunk open so you can use it. Just like in the original Model 3 and like most cars, before the Model 3 trunk was powered, there was a button back there. You would go back and you'd push the button and it would just pop open and then you could you know, open and close the trunk manually. Maybe we'll see something similar here, but I'm really hoping that this button is an indication that we have a powered frunk on the Tesla Cybertruck that would be awesome. I would use my frunk so much more if it was powered. Also, these outlets you see here, this is like an EcoFlow battery. It's a third-party product. It's not part of the Cybertruck. They're obviously just doing some testing or something, so that doesn't mean that those outlets are in the frunk. Unfortunately, looking around, I don't see any other outlets that could be sticking through. Of course, it's not finished, so it's all speculation, but hopefully there will be at least a couple of outlets available in the front like you get in the Ford Lightning. And then something else really exciting we're seeing here is the Super Manifold version two. So the Super Manifold is in the Model Y and Model 3 and pretty much all the cars now, the Model S and X. It was torn down by Monroe and Associates. The Super Manifold right here. Ben, why don't you kick us off and start talking about the Super Manifold? All right, the Super Manifold, like Corey said, is almost identical to what was on the Model Y. Uh, we do have a new part number on this now. Uh, we haven't seen anything that's changed. We'll probably open up the end of this, similar to what we did on the Y, to take a look inside to see if there's anything that they have actually changed. But this is uh, what is handling most of the AC coolant that's going on. Well, now we're seeing Super Manifold V2, and that could mean any number of things. Hopefully, it's a boost in efficiency. This HVAC system is already very efficient, but any more efficiency that we can pull out of the vehicle to make it go a longer distance with less energy is gonna be beneficial, especially for something as big and heavy as the Cybertruck. So really excited to see that Tesla is continuing to innovate here. Now here's one that could be a negative. If you remember from the Cybertruck unveil, they had, how could you forget? Sure? Yeah. Oh my God. Well. The armor glass that was supposed to be not indestructible, but highly resistant to impacts and much less likely to break. And you can see here on the Cybertruck, the glass is actually broken, which is just so funny. Maybe Franz was around <laughs> having a good time throwing some more steel balls at the Cybertruck and just happened to crack it. Uh, but again, I wouldn't read too much into this. It's not a final product version. Who knows if this was prototype glass? It's not the final armor glass spec. Who knows if they ditched armor glass? We don't even know if it's gonna be in the final vehicle, although I'm really hoping it will be. In my talk with Corey Steuben, he said that the Cybertruck, even 
even without the armor glass, has a huge advantage in resisting rock chips, simply due to its angle of approach. Checking out the interior on this Cybertruck, ventilated seats are pretty much a guarantee at this point, especially when you look at the Model 3 refresh, even that has ventilated seats. So we're pretty much guaranteed to get them here. I am so happy because I really miss those in our Model X that we sold, which thank God, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, <laughs> we have uh, looking like ventilated seats definitely in the front here, maybe in the back. Probably not, but you never know. You also get a decent look at the ambient lighting strip that's in the Cybertruck. We saw this in a leak not that long ago where the Cybertruck was driving around and those strips were lit up, which was quite the surprise. Well, now with the Refresh Model 3, that also having this ambient LED lighting strip, you're getting the same thing in the Cybertruck. Most likely it's gonna be coming to all of Tesla's vehicles. That's kind of what they do. They introduce something new in one model and it slowly makes it to the other models, which we'll see in some other things in this video. Other parts of the interior, the steering wheel, I'm a little conflicted. Uh, I love the yoke. I think it's way more comfortable to use, but it's not obviously as simple as a steering wheel, and many people just simply don't like it, which whatever, I don't blame them, uh, even though I find it much more comfortable than a traditional round wheel. This is kind of like either the best or the worst of both worlds, the way you look at it, because you have kind of the weird yoke shape, which I'm excited for because it'll, you know, keep my wrists happy, uh, but you also have the non uniform uniformity in that it's going to be in different places in space depending on how you're turning where you're turning so maybe you know things like uh, roundabouts and stuff could still be a little strange or tight parking situations but hopefully the four-wheel steering that the Cybertruck has is going to help with that along with the fact that there is something to grab at the top even though it's not always going to be in the same spot there'll be something around the same area I don't know kind of strange uh, decision in my opinion on Tesla's part but I'm excited to try it out either way and then this dirty interior screen is supposedly bigger than the Model S and the Model X. So the big question left for Cybertruck, of course, well, range and kind of, you know, the, the final specs, but price, what the heck is this thing gonna cost? Of course, Tesla told us what they thought it was gonna cost back in 2019, but so many things have changed since then that who knows if any of that is still gonna hold true. And that kind of transitions us into the price drops on the Model S and Model X. See, whenever people were thinking Cybertruck is gonna be under 80,000 in order to capture the $7,500 federal tax credit, my thought was always, but, but Model X is over 100 grand or 100 grand, and then, you know, it kept going down <laughs> lower and lower. But it's a $100,000 vehicle with a 100 kilowatt hour, slightly less than that, battery pack. There's no way Cybertruck is coming with 100 kilowatt hour pack. It's gonna be bigger. And that's, of course, the main driver of cost in an electric vehicle is these massive battery packs you need in these bigger vehicles. So I was kind of stuck, like, how is Cybertruck going to come in less than Model X? Yes, I know it's much easier to manufacture. It doesn't have the Falcon wing doors. It doesn't have paint and all, all of those kind of efficiencies. But especially when the Cybertruck is brand new, they're not producing it in volume. They're ramping. They're kind of figuring things out as they go, uh, getting their you know efficiencies of scale going. I just, I didn't see it. Well, with these price drops, things are starting to look a little clearer for me and a little more likely that Cybertruck is definitely gonna come under that $80,000 price point, which I am so totally excited about. I do still think Tesla's gonna have it around 79K so that they can bring in as much money as possible while still being able to advertise the tax credit. But anyway, let's talk about what Tesla did with Model S and X. So Model S long range was costing $88,490. It's now dropped to $74,990, which is, I think, like a really good price, I guess probably because historically it's been so much more, but man, is that a nice car. And looking at the Plaid, even better. It went from $108,500 to $89,990. So under $90,000, you're getting the fastest production, the quickest production car. Yeah, Rimac Navara, blah, blah, I know, but <laughs> whatever. One of the quickest production cars ever made. That thing, if you've never been in a Plaid, you need to get in one. I've only been in two and it's just like, it's ridiculous. But anyway, these prices are awesome. Now, Model S still will not qualify for the federal tax credit because for sedans, it's much lower. I think it's 55,000 to qualify, but the Model X long range now does qualify. It comes in at $79,990 for a long range Model X, which in my opinion is an insane deal. I think if that's the kind of car you're looking for, I miss our Model X that we sold, but man, am I glad we sold it. I sold it to Carvana like a month ago for $78,300. So right now I could buy that same car for only about $1,000 more than I just sold it for, whoa. And I would get a $7,500 federal tax credit on top of that. So really it'd be less than what I just sold it for and my car had like 20,000 miles on it. Whatever, either way, I'm very happy. It sucks if you know you bought it earlier and you still owe money on it, but you know that's the way these things go with the price changes. It's kind of crazy. And then the Plaid Model X is coming in at 89,990, whereas it used to be 108,490. So the prices are coming down a lot here. There must not be all that much demand right now for Model S and Model X. 
but with interest rates really high, uh, the job market's not looking great. Personally, if I was spending X amount of dollars, like there's nothing I want other than a Tesla, but I'm not the only customer out there. So other people must be buying other cars at these price points. But with these new prices, wow, the competition, I think, in my opinion, is gonna have a really hard time competing with this, especially think about like Lucid. Oh my goodness, they must be like crying over there because they were already having a hard time selling their vehicles. But anyway, those are the new Model S and X prices. I think they're great. And then speaking of pricing, I'll probably make a whole dedicated video about this, but full self-driving has come down from 15,000 down to 12,000, which is what it was before it moved up to 15,000. And wow, I'm very surprised by this. This one definitely caught me off guard. I did not expect FSD to ever go back down. And this will have a lot of thoughts for a lot of people. For me, I think the take rate just probably wasn't that good. And Tesla, it's a demand lever. They want more people to buy FSD. It's a lot of just straight cash they're getting. Of course, they pay money and they invest in FSD and, and you know it costs them something, but it doesn't cost them per car, right? So if more people buy FSD, they're making way more money per car than they were when they're not buying you know, with FSD. Now, the big negative here is Elon Musk has been very clear for a long time that as the features increase on FSD, the price is gonna to continue to increase. He said a car with FSD will eventually be worth something like $100,000 once it's complete, once Robotaxi is here. He continues to say Robotaxi will be out by the end of the year, something that I am not on board with. I just, I don't see it. I'm happy to be wrong. I would love if I was wrong about that, but I just don't think by January 1st, 2024, that I'll be sleeping in the backseat of my car while it drives me to work. I just don't think that's the way it's gonna be. Hopefully I'm wrong. With this price decrease, I actually think this is getting more closer to uh, something that's like actually worth the price. 15,000, I was a hard no. Back in the day, 12,000, I was a hard no, but full self-driving, especially full self-driving beta, is way more capable than it was a year ago or a year and a half or whenever it used to be $12,000. Now, the big negative here is if you have hardware four, you will get full self-driving beta. I mean, not me, I'm still waiting for it to come to my hardware four car, but you will get full self-driving beta, but certain things like Summon and, and uh, Auto Park and Smart Summon still aren't working with these new vehicles you're buying. So if full self-driving beta is the main thing you want, which I love and I wanna use it every day, so I mean, I could maybe justify that, then you know I get it, but keep in mind, Certain features, even though you pay this 12,000, are still gonna be missing. The subscription price has not changed, it's still 200 a month. So if you only keep your cars for you know three years or four years, then it's probably still not worth this price. You probably wanna go with the subscription. But if you keep your cars a long time or you don't wanna pay that subscription price or for whatever reason, you have the option to pay 12,000 for full self-driving now. I think that's a little easier to stomach. I'd love to see 10K. I think at 10K, I'd be recommending it all day. Everybody buy this. At 12K, I think a lot of people can start to justify this purchase. I know uh, that I might catch some flack for that. A lot of comments on YouTube have said to me, this is not even close. Some people say they would pay 1K, that's too low. Some people say 5K, 10K. Um, so everybody of course has a different opinion, but for me, 12,000 is now starting to get to the point where it's, yeah, I think maybe something you could consider. And then last up, the new Model 3. I wanted to talk about this a bit. CarWow has a full overview of the car. Lucky them. They got invited, obviously, by Tesla to come check it out in China, and they went through the car. There are still some things we don't know, uh, so I wanted to go over and talk to you about some of the things I thought were the coolest, some of my favorite improvements. But let's start off with things that they didn't cover in their video uh, that maybe are still happening. Um, so the first thing, the biggest for me, is the front bumper camera. So if you look at Tesla's website, you can go to the Tesla China website. You actually can, can configure this new Model 3 if you want. Uh, you can't do that in the US yet, so you can play around on their website. But on the promotional material there, you can see a bumper camera, a camera in the front bumper, which has been rumored for a while from green on X. Also, the Cybertruck, of course, has a front bumper camera. So I've kind of speculated just from that, that eventually this front bumper camera is going to be coming to all the different vehicles in Tesla's lineup that's going to be used. Some people think mostly just for parking assist, but I think full self-driving will be using this for sure um, to assist in, in looking around the world. And it just leaves open questions. So like I have a hardware for Model Y, but what does that even mean? I don't have a front bumper camera. Now, in my opinion, retrofitting that since I have the new board is pretty simple. You just take the bumper off and put a new bumper with that hardware three camera. Or if it's an attachment, maybe it's even easier. You just put that attachment and wire it up to the board. And now you got that bumper camera. Hardware four is ready to accept it. What about hardware three? There's going to be no retrofits for hardware three, according to Elon Musk. Of course, things can change. A crazy idea I had. Probably not going to happen. Probably makes no sense. But hardware four has two cameras in the front, front-facing area, whereas hardware three has three cameras in the front-facing area. What if we took one of those cameras and disabled it and plugged in a bumper camera? It probably makes no sense, but I'm just kind of speculating here. So that's kind of the biggest thing. Like the the car that CarWow looked at, the kind of review, the initial review they did, didn't have a bumper camera. So obviously Tesla's still not ready to tell us all about that. 
I'm really interested to hear what's gonna happen with Hardware 4 going forward in the future. Some other updates of this new Refresh Model 3 that I think are awesome. The new tail lights look pretty cool and they're all on the bumper, so they're not two pieces. Now in the US, everybody talks about this regulation Doug DeMiro made famous where you can't have, he's like, you can't have uh, hazard lights or whatever on a moving piece of bodywork. So if you lift up the trunk, then there's more lights below it. Um, so his, you know, his videos are very educational in that way. And this car right now is going to Europe first and then the UK and some other places. It's gonna be in Europe in October and the US there's still nothing. Uh, I think it's not going to be till next year, probably till quarter one of 2024 when we'll start to see it here. Uh, but we have no idea in the US when it's coming. So things could change by the time it gets here to meet regulations. Tesla knows the regulations. Obviously, they sold millions of cars. It's not something they're going to mess up. On the interior, you got some cool stuff. Of course, we have the LED ambient lighting. The steering wheel, you now pre pretty much got the same wheel from the SNX with no stocks. Personally, I love this. I think it's superior. I whatever. <laughs> I know people disagree with me, but it is a really comfortable experience. It's really nice not having the stocks. Um, so I, this is a welcome change for me. I would take it in a heartbeat if I could. And then also the interior is supposed to have better noise insulation and you have acoustic glass, not just on the front windows, which you've had for a while on all the vehicles, but now on the rear windows as well. And Tesla is saying that ambient noise, wind noise, and everything is going to be severely reduced in this new Model 3. That was always my complaint of my 2018 Model 3. It was so loud on the highway. It was pretty annoying. My Model Y now, I actually think it's very comfortable and pretty quiet, our, my 2021. Our 2023 Model Y is actually slightly better than, than the 2021, but pretty similar, but I'm happy with both of those. You're also getting a rear passenger control screen in the back, just like the Refresh SNX, which is pretty cool. I think that's great for people to be able to control their climate and everything. And then efficiency, this is one of my favorite things about electric vehicles. The drag coefficient is going down from 0.225 to 0.219, and there is up to an 8% improvement in overall efficiency without changing the batteries or the motors. This is just things they've done to the car pretty much to improve aero and other ways. I think there's some new tires on the car as well that's supposed to help with noise and efficiency and everything. So lots of cool improvements with efficiency in this car, but not a change to the motor or batteries yet. Maybe that's coming though. The range, we don't have EPA range. The WLTP range is like way inflated. You think EPA range is an overestimate and real world is not good enough? And don't even look at the WLTP range, which is what they use in Europe. It is way, way, way over even the EPA estimated range. So as of now, the outlets are saying over 400 miles of range with the long range. It's gonna be less than that. I would guess, just based off of everything that was said, we're gonna have somewhere in the 350 to 380 miles of range on the long range Model 3 in the US, which is still great. It's an improvement and that's a, a huge range. I think that's awesome, but don't really pay attention to those 400 mile figures. Don't think that's happening. As of now, there's no mention of the Performance Model 3. So what's gonna happen with that? We're getting a Model 3 Plaid. Elon's mentioned that in the past, or what's going on. It's all speculation at this point, but as of now, you only have the rear wheel drive and the long range that have been detailed by Tesla. And then as I said earlier, it's coming to Europe in October and then other places after that, US, we have no clue. I would guess quarter one of 2024. So wow, that was a lot of crazy stuff. What was your favorite Tesla news <laughs> that you've heard over the past day or so? Because it's just a lot. I, I was up so late last night just reading all this stuff, watching all this stuff. I just couldn't believe everything that was happening. A lot of cool stuff for Tesla. I'm really excited for the future. I think full self-driving beta version 12 is going to be excellent, and I'm excited to try that. Uh, anyway, if you have questions, leave those down below. I look forward to talking to you down in the comments, and you will see me in the next video.